We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. Many of you are familiar with the name Dr. John Gottman. He's a uh, researcher who studied marriage, and frankly, much of the findings that he's had in that category can extend to many other types of relationships, whether it's in extended family situations, even uh, parenting, or uh, in friendships, businesses, etc. In his groundbreaking research, he has determined that the strongest indicator for relationship co uh, collapse is the presence of contempt. When one individual holds on to contempt for any period of time, it becomes a poison to that individual themselves. It that allows them to have lots of access to their feelings of dark anger and hatred and disdain. And not only do they have that acid from the inside out, but then they feel obliged, if you will, to put the acid on the inside of the person in front of them. Now, one of the things we know about narcissists is that they have such a strong need for control and they have such a strong need for superiority over you that when you don't seem to go along with their reasoning very well, then that's where they build their sense of contempt toward you. And uh, it, it's going to be strong and it's going to be overwhelming and it's going to lead to relationship disaster. And one of the, the other ingredients that has to go along for them to hold on to the contempt and to rationalize and justify why it's okay is the, the narcissist in their contempt will also cling to dishonesty. It's like they actually have a, dis, a, a commitment to their dishonesty. In other words, what they do is they lie to themselves. Today, I want to point out seven of the most common lies that narcissists tell themselves as they hold you in contempt. And as you see the, uh, the, the lack of honesty that they bring, I'm hoping there can be a certain kind of freedom that you can eventually find as you break away from the, uh, the, uh, the cage they're trying to put you on the inside of. Let's run through those. The first of the seven lies that a narcissist will tell themselves is, you are defective and therefore you are not trustworthy. You see, one of the things that narcissists do is they enter into relationships with a scoreboarding mindset and, and it uh, frankly sets up binary thinking, black, white, all or nothing. One of us is the winner, one of us is the loser, and guess which one you're going to be. Uh, automatically, you're going to be the designated loser. So when you come along with your different thoughts and ideas, it's like you're just bad. Everything about you is bad. You're defective and I can't trust you. Therefore, if you don't go along with me, then you're just doing all that you can to make our life miserable. And so they honestly need to believe that about you, regardless of what the evidence actually might say. A second lie that they will tell, and that is, or that they will tell themselves, they'll say, I am, frankly, a misunderstood, enlightened person. Now, my reaction to that is, wow. I mean, that shows such a lack of personal insight. They honestly think of themselves as being, well, not just a notch above you, but several notches above you. Uh, they think to themselves, I make so much sense, and I'm, I'm definitely way above average in knowing how things are supposed to be. And because of this inflated sense of ego, which is dishonest, uh, they can hold on to whatever uh, negative feelings they have when you don't uh, go along and say, oh, yes, I, I agree with you because you're, you're not going to. A third lie that they say to themselves is, you know, I would have no problems if it weren't for you. Uh, so basically what they do is they whitewash their own negative characteristics. <laughs> they, they won't admit that they bring a lot of difficulty and strain and argument and, uh, arguments, etc. It's like, well, whatever problems I have, it, it's caused by you. I, it, take, take me just on my own uh, terms. <laughs> Man, I'm the ideal. And, and so they honestly believe that about themselves and they, they hold themselves in such esteem that's just completely false. 
a fourth lie that they'll tell themselves. And that is your perceptions are consistently wrong. And that's, of course, their egotism. And you might think, well, I have perceptions that are not the same as the narcissist, but why don't we just say it's different? And the narcissist is like, nope, it's right or wrong. And since you don't agree with me, you're wrong. And so this eliminates their ability or willingness to listen and to receive input. In fact, <laughs> there, there's another one. This is number five, and this is one of those that just makes you shake your head every time you hear something like this. And I suspect that many of you heard, have heard this lie. The narcissist, number five, will lie to themselves and say, I know you better than you know yourself. And you, you can just react like, oh, please, give me a break. Uh, they, they actually think of themselves as being the uh, the keepers of wisdom. And uh, and so basically what they're doing is they're just ascribing judgment. They think it's, uh, it's based on fact, but it's based on their need to keep you in a down place. I know you better than you know yourself. And, and that's one of those that makes you want to go say, excuse me while I go puke, and then we'll get back to the topic. Uh, it, it, no, no, no. Uh, but that's that's the lie that they tell to themselves. A sixth lie that they'll use, and that is uh, they'll think toward you, whatever problems you have, you brought it on yourself. And so let's suppose that you say, well, I'm, I'm struggling with my responses to you and how you do this, and I, I wish you would do this differently. And uh, their response is going to be, yeah, you know why? It's because you're a screw up. They have no compassion for you. They have no willingness to explore the context of your comments. It's like, well, if you got a problem, you did it to yourself. And they they completely take themselves out of any kind of equation there. And then a seventh lie that they say to themselves, and that is, I have no need for collaboration. And, and what they do is they, they hold themselves up egotistically in this singular kind of way that says, I, I don't want, I don't need any kind of input from uh, anyone else. They have a lone wolf kind of mentality. And actually they tie it to, in their minds, they tie it to their superiority when in fact they don't want collaboration because in their history, collaboration hurts. These people are carrying a great deal of pain and misery and pessimism but what they're going to say is, no, um, the, the fact that I can't connect with you and I don't need to connect with you just says, I'm just so much more brilliant than you are. I don't need your uh, any kind of collaboration. Now, do you notice when I, I mention these seven lies that they tell themselves as they uh, justify their contempt toward you? Do you notice there, there's an undertow of, of multiple themes here? First, these people use major projection. In other words, they see in you what they won't come to terms with on the inside of themselves. And that's an enormous, a very consistent pattern. In addition, they, uh, they're they in heavy denial. They don't want to admit who they are. Uh, they just want to uh, sidestep whatever truth might come their way. Um, these individuals have lots and lots of anger they're sitting on. They're just a powder keg, uh, which is why it goes into contempt, the, the begrudgment they have. Uh, they have a lot of anger, that which is the uh, the fuel for all the bitterness and hate. And then in addition, uh, as I mentioned, these people are deeply hurt. They're, they're, they're very wounded, but they're like that wounded animal that just bites whoever comes against them. Narcissists don't have the insight to access the, uh, well, what, what needs to be the, the truth that they need to hold on to. Uh, instead, all they want to do is uh, demonize you. They want to demoralize you. They want to dehumanize you. And uh, they they think to themselves, if I have a problem, it, it can't be about me. Therefore, you are the cause of my problem. That's the dishonesty that they bring. They can't say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a troubled person. What they do when they hold on to these lies is they illustrate the fact that they are runners. And when I say they're runners... They're running away from personal responsibility. They don't want to take responsibility for themselves. They're running away from their own psychological defections and their own woundedness. They're running away from their history of rejection. They're running away from their pathological insecurity. They're running away from any sense of accountability. They're runners and they're, they're trying to put it all on you. And they say, go check that person out. That's the one who's all, uh, causing all the problems. And so somehow... Somehow, to them, holding on to contempt becomes more appealing than taking the uh, the time and the humility, frankly, to self-reflect and introspect. Like, I don't need to do that. So, 
when you're dealing with something like that, there's one huge thing that you want to avoid. And that is don't even enter into a debate about what truth is. You see the lies for what they are, I hope. But these individuals are deeply committed to their dishonesty. That's what we refer to when we talk about them hiding behind their false self and their alternate reality. In other words, there, there's just a lot of, uh, of lying, and it's part of a very, very tight defense uh, system. And when you try to talk truth to them, they will shut you down literally every time. Instead, I'm hoping you can ask, well, what does my objective, in other words, I'm honest, I hope, mind tell me? And I'm hoping your objective mind says, um, I certainly don't need to take direction from a disturbed individual, that's for sure. But then I'm hoping your objective mind says, I need to learn how to trust my own gut. Uh, I'm going to find out and I'm going to ask myself, what do I think is valid about me and my approach toward relationship? Trust yourself. The, the narcissist wants to eliminate your, uh, your self-trust. But I'm, but again, that's, that's the disturbed person, uh, you know, trying to call the shots. And then, uh, rather than defending yourself, let your behavior, let your healthy priorities be your primary defense, if you will. Take initiative in being you. And if the narcissist says, well, I hold you in contempt for that, it's like, yes, I know that's what you do. And then go ahead and do it anyway. Um, you don't have to justify uh, con, uh, you know, who you are when that narcissist is holding contempt over you. They're, they're doing their own self-justification just fine. Uh, but again, it's part of their survival plan. Uh, go figure. It's part of their pain management plan, frankly. You need to separate from such a person, and then I'm hoping you can say, I respect myself, and I do not need the endorsement from a misguided liar. Now, the video such as this can give you some good insight about what you're dealing with. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please do so. Know that we, you know, when you get into the channel, you'll see that videos tab. You can uh, uh, go into all sorts of other videos that we've had uh, posted on here. We have them all archived. Uh, it, I, I consider it such an honor that you allow me to be on your journey with you. I, I really do. If you have a need for therapy, and I know many times when you're struggling with something like this, it can be helpful to have somebody to sit down with you and work it out. I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. It's an online uh, therapy resource. Uh, uh, you have to be a licensed professional therapy with uh, with years of experience before they uh, they'll take you into the self uh, in, uh, as a, uh, a person on uh, BetterHelp. Uh, uh, go through the link. There'll be some questions for you to, uh, to answer. And then uh, it's so good to have somebody that says, I want to know you and I want to see if we can work this thing through, uh, get the help that you would need and, uh, and uh, uh, invest in yourself in that way. In addition, in my retirement from my therapy practice, I, I am doing this on the side now. I've put together courses and I'm drawing upon 40 plus years of experience in the therapy field. Uh, each course has at least 25 teaching videos. Each video has handouts and guided questions that go along with it. And then uh, uh, they, they go with a certain theme. Uh, my um, newest course right now is called Anger Games, How Not to Get Pulled into Their Anger Traps with Them, uh, as, as well as This Is Me About Boundaries, Free to Be, Finding Yourself, Ready, Set, Connect, Going Into Healthy Directions. So uh, avail yourself to that. There's links below uh, for those. In addition, on my website, we have access to my webinars, which are 90-minute presentations of a very different nature that you can access, along with my podcasts and many articles, like many articles, my books, etc. Narcissists hold on to contempt, and then as they do, they lie to themselves about why that's Go figure why that's a reasonable plan of, of attack toward you. It, it makes no sense for them to uh, live life that way, but that's where they are. I'm hoping you can separate yourself off from that and commit yourself to the uh, better alternatives. Here on Team Healthy, we stand for dignity, respect, and civility, starting with yourself. And in doing so, I hope that you can commit yourself to becoming a person of peace.